this video is going to cover the normal distribution, concepts, z-scores, things that we're going to need to know for the next few lessons. Uh, the normal distribution has a lot that we could learn about it, but we're just going to stay with the high-level concepts. Terminology. The normal distribution is that familiar bell-shaped curve. It's a continuous distribution and is defined by the mean and the standard deviation. So the mean is going to be that middle value, that little tick, and then um, the majority of our values are going to be found within three standard deviations on each side of that mean. You'll also notice that the z-score is also defined by the mean and the standard deviation. So the z-score is your sample value, you're going to subtract your mean, and you're going to divide by the standard deviation. And it's going to tell you how many standard deviations away something is from the mean. The z-score is a standardized score, so we can compare two totally different populations against each other. So you could have a population um, that had a mean of 85 with a standard deviation of 4 against a population that had a mean of 30 and a standard deviation of 1. And the z-score would give you that same playing field to measure them against. And a perfect example would be, um, we do this all the time in the real world with conversions over to a measure we understand. So from like Celsius to Fahrenheit. So in the US, if somebody told us what the temperature was in Celsius, we would convert it to Fahrenheit so we could compare it against our context that we're used to dealing with. So the difference is, is we haven't dealt much in the real world using z-scores. So for the next few lessons, we're going to learn how to use z-scores in the normal curve to come up with ways that we can compare very different things in a standardized context. The standard normal distribution is just that, is the normal distribution using the standardized z-score. So the center is going to be zero, and you're going to have three standard deviations on each side of it. Other facts about the normal distribution. It is symmetrical. It's a probability distribution, and as a probability distribution, it means that the probability always adds up to 100%. So at 100%, being symmetrical, 50% is going to be on each side. Now, let's go ahead and look at the example. Let's say we have a quiz, and the quiz has a score of 35. The average score is 25, and there's a standard deviation of 2. So the mean and the standard deviation define this. So our mean is 25, if you look at the very score on the bottom there. And then we're going to go up by multiples of 2. So we're going to take that standard deviation of 2, and we're going to add 25 plus 2 is 27, plus 2 is 29, plus 2 is 31. And then working your way backwards, starting at 25 down, minus 2 is 23, minus 2 is 21, minus 2 is 19. So if we were to use the normal distribution with our quiz, then we could see that the majority of our students who took this quiz fell between 19 points and 31 points. Now, that doesn't mean a student can't earn 34 or they can't earn 11. It just means that they're not going to be in that middle normal amount. They're going to be your outliers then. Converting things to z-values, when we go ahead and look at that, if you take that middle value, so 25 minus the mean is 25, divided by 2 is 0, because 0 divided by 2 is still 0. If we go up 1, 27 minus 25 gives us 2. 2 divided by 2, which is our standard deviation, will give us 1. So our z-score is 1, so where those two match up. 29 is 29 minus 25 is 4, divided by 2 is 2, which gives us a z-score of 2. We could do that with any of those values. So that z-value will always have a mean of 0 and go out 1, 2, 3, and down negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So your z-values will always range in there.
So using the normal distribution, I somewhat alluded to the Fahrenheit Celsius example earlier. We want to be able to convert values into percentage chances and percentage chances into values. And so in order to do that, we need something to convert that between. Being a probability distribution, um, the normal distribution can help us with that, but there's a few key things you have to know about in order to use the normal distribution. Number one is if you looked at your original population, does it actually look like a normal distribution? If it doesn't, then that basically means that you should not be using the normal distribution for that problem. Now, if we know the looks like a normal distribution, we know the mean, and we know the standard deviation, then we can go ahead and move forward in our examples. So example one, we need to estimate the chance of our production plant getting a part completed in three to five days. So looking back historically, the production plant is known to be normally distributed in their production. And we know the average or the mean amount of time it normally takes to get that part done. And we know the standard deviation for that same part in days. So we have all the facts we need to do to work on example one. Now I'm not going to actually do it here. That's going to be the, one of the next few videos. In example two, we want to mail a special brochure to our top clients. Now, based on historical evidence, we know that the population is normally distributed because we double check that before we move forward. We know the average amount that a customer purchases, and we know the standard deviation for that purchase amount as well. So we can use the normal distribution and some equations in Excel or some charts in the back of the book to take our, we want the top 20%, so we can change our percentage value into what dollar purchase should that equate to in order to be able to fall into our special brochure kind of gives you a little bit of an example and the high-level concepts um, continue on with the next video.